Good afternoon, everyone. Extreme weather leads to patchwork harvest in Australia. Some areas down 70% on the harvest from last year. Now exporters face high domestic prices soaring Australian dollar, the beginning of their difficulties for export. Also, southern winters are drying out in Australia. University of Exeter shaking up the climate debate coming out saying that the IPCC extreme warming models putting 4.5 C or above are actually fictitious, that the most you could expect would be right around 3.4 C. That was government funded as well. Early season typhoons rolling over the Philippines into southern Vietnam. And happy Chinese New Year of the dog 2018. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt2030 and click that bell so you can get the latest updates. Article here talking about extreme weather leading to patchwork harvest with yields down 70% from last year in some areas. And even at the very beginning photo caption here, I highlighted in blue, to the naked eye, the wheat looks okay, but inside the grains are damaged. Well, this is the same thing that happened in the United States when those late season blizzards rolled in after the crops were up. The yields were down and then the protein content was extremely degraded when they did come to harvest. This article out February 6th talks about extreme dry in New South Wales and Victoria, late frosts and record damaged crops. Although Western Australia made a comeback, this quote here, we had a June and September where we recorded zero rain. Remember that is during the winter time down in the Southern Hemisphere which is unprecedented. Then they had 65 days of frost during winter, which is also rare. And then during September, they had one of those anomalous 40 degree days, the same things that we're seeing in the Northern Hemisphere. Grain crops are starting now to be blatantly affected. New South Wales, 50 to 55 days of below zero Celsius temperatures. That was for the winter of last year. They've already had cold this year. I know they've had heat. It's been flip-flopping all over the place. This is what's expected with more cosmic rays, with the weakening magnetosphere and our jet streams going out of place due to the intensifying grand solar minimum. Now let's stir this into the pot as well. Australia's southern winters are drying out. They show that May to July rainfall has decreased 20% since 1970. Well, this is going to continue to amplify as we get into the grand solar minimum. So if Australia is already having this much difficulty with their crop yields when we're just at the cusp of the beginning of the grand solar minimum, this is a place that I would mark on a map if I was a consultant talking to clients that this is an area to look for crop losses and they're going to drive the price domestically. How much does that add into the overall amount globally? The push on prices and you come out with some kind of forecast. It's that simple. And here's what I'm talking about. This whole channel is based on food crop losses and going into smart contracts with cryptocurrency for food deliveries. Here's a perfect example. It's already in front of you. Difficulty now for the Australian wheat sellers and the grain sellers to sell on the export market due to high domestic prices, strong Australian dollars, meaning supply and payment. And even that last sentence right there, this year we're struggling to get wheat away, meaning export the wheat, too heavily priced. In the beginning, it's going to be like this. Other places are going to get regional losses and they're going to drive the price domestically. Not going to be able to compete on the international market because prices are lower. But eventually, as we step into 2020, as I've always said from the beginning of this channel, that's when the prices globally are going to rise because the supply will be limited everywhere across the planet by that point. Now look at your natural news. This article piqued my interest right away. Apocalyptic predictions about global warming by the UN and IPCC are not credible. And I said, well, interesting. Who put this report out? University of Exeter. Direct article link here. Future climate change revealed by current climate variations. And this research was supported by the European Research Council. And what the University of Exeter had pinpointed the problem with the climate models is something called equilibrium climate sensitivity. So in a nutshell, the IPCC was saying anywhere from 4.5 to 6 degrees C warming in this runaway fashion. University of Exeter said no, no, far lower range. Highest that we could be looking at globally would be somewhere around 3.4 C. 
I don't know why this is not in the news. They just cut in half the extreme warming models from the IPCC. And this was funded by the European Research Council. Jumping over to Asia, extremely early typhoons start far southern Philippines and rolls right up into southern Vietnam. It diminished to a tropical storm already, but you can see the cone here over the last couple of days that had been put out. Happy New Year to all of you watching. Year of the Dog 2018 tonight in Asia is Chinese New Year. Tomorrow, the first day of the dog. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. 2018 is definitely going to be a year that's going to bite us for food prices.